Hey guys, Magellan here for some tips and tricks you can make use of in RS3. I'm going to group these up into four sections. Tips and tricks for skilling, bank management, settings, and UI setup. You should definitely get a Dwarven Army Axe as soon as you plan on cooking. When equipped, this axe will grant you an additional 3 base experience for all of these skills. Since most of these are very limited to lower level skilling options, you'll get the most use out of it when cooking since it works for any type and level of food. Still, if you are skilling with these other resources, go ahead and use it. To get the axe, all you need to do is talk to Major Mary Rancor in Burthrope and ask for another axe with the first option. This should work even if you haven't gotten it originally from doing the Tulumbridge achievement path, but if not, it can still be simply gained by activating the Tavery and Lumbridge lodestones and then using the boat south of Taverly to Lumbridge. Three additional experience does not seem a lot, but it really does add up over time. If you use magic a lot, a Vecna Skull can be a good early investment. It's a rare drop item, but you can easily get it for 200,000 GP in the GE. You can click on it to draw power and it will give you a 2 to 11 magic level boost. You can use this boost to cast spells that you have not yet reached the level for. Just be aware that the boost will deplete by one level per minute, so make sure you can still cast spells without it. It's a great alternative to use before unlocking overload potions. There are many more skill boosts and support options to use, but I'm just going to name these early accessible ones to get you started. If you're like me and absolutely dread getting certain Slayer tasks like Strike Worms, you may want to consider using some Reaper points to block whatever you don't like. Go into the rewards shop of any Slayer Master after getting a task you want to avoid, and then go to the Assignments tab. You can spend 100 points to block it, and then you'll never get it again unless you undo it. On the other hand, if there's a task you want to get more of, once you have that task, go to the same place and choose to prefer it for another 100 Slayer points and then you'll have a higher chance of getting those tasks. You can block and prefer up to 8 tasks. When you're at a lower level, you'll have to pickpocket people to level thieving. Unfortunately, this option is usually hidden under a right click, which makes constant pickpocketing harder. To make this easier, you can go into your settings, combat and action bar, and then go to attack options. If you change your NPC attack option to right click, it will automatically pickpocket as your default click when thieving. Now you can just repeatedly click to steal. Just remember to change it back later when you go into combat. I also recommend getting a feather fingered necklace and gloves of silence. These will give you additional pickpocketing benefits, but they do degrade to dust when used up. If you're pickpocketing in Ardoin, an Ardoin cloak too is nice as well. There are some skills where you'll want to fill up a box or a bag as you get items like mining and archaeology. If you were to click on your ore box as you mine to fill it, it will stop your action and you'll have to click to start it again. By putting the box on an action bar, you can just click on the key it's set to and you'll fill it without stopping your action. You can do this with your gem bag and soil box for archaeology as well. On a slightly different note, you can also put items that teleport you on your bar as well. Some items require you to go through a couple of menus before getting to the teleport option. But by putting it on your bar, you can just click the button it's assigned to to quickly pull up your teleport options. Putting your wilderness sword on your bar will make you immediately teleport to Edgeville, which can make runecrafting in the abyss faster. When smithing items, at first it seems like you can only do one at a time because clicking on the forge again just reheats the item. But after you get your item, you can right click on the forge and open the smithing interface again to make a new item. You can keep doing this to fill up your inventory. You'll still need to reheat your items to make it faster, but now it's more AFK. Also, be sure to always smith in World 70 at Falador's Artisan Workshop. This world pretty much always has a Luminite Injector effect active, making your smithing progress faster. If you're skilling with something that can be used with a portable, the Lumbridge Market in World 84 can be a useful location. Portables are stations that grant various benefits like experience boosts or a chance to not consume items when skilling with them. Here are all the portables and what skills you can use them with. This world and location is a hub area where people are always putting these portables down, so you can conveniently use the bank and keep skilling. You can also right-click to configure it to whatever you're doing. 
As you can see, this world can be a bit laggy, so you can also use the Portables Friends chat to find other areas with less people in it. To wrap this section up, you can also set goals for each skill. Right-click on the skill you want to set a goal for, and choose Set Level Target to name a level you want to reach. Now it will show how close you are to reaching your goal. It's good to set this for big milestones you're aiming to reach. The bank can be a bit overwhelming when first starting out. When making new tabs, you can right-click and customize them to give them an icon and name that fits what you want. I recommend doing this early on to prevent your bank from becoming a mess. I personally like making a loot tab to put things I plan on selling in. As you may know, you can set different presets for your setup. You can go into your presets with the gear icon and set it up however you like, but if there are only a couple of things you want to change, you can do that by just dragging over what you want. So now instead of overwriting the whole thing, I could just change one or two parts of the setup very easily. Also, when loading a preset, sometimes you just care about the inventory and don't want the armor or vice versa. You can just unhighlight what you don't want for each preset here. A little trick though is that you actually don't have to go to this menu to save your setups. Gear up with whatever you want and you can just right click and save on the preset number from the main bank screen. You can do the same thing for your Beast of Burden. Just load it up and right click on the summon icon to save it. Over time, you'll get scaling outfit pieces and some cosmetics. Instead of letting them take up space in your bank, you can destroy them and then grab them back by clicking on Diango's icon here. Now you can retrieve whatever item you want in the moment. You can tell if an item can be retrieved here by seeing if it mentions Diango when trying to destroy it. If you go down to the filter section on the bottom and then click on Clean Up, this will help you get rid of any unnecessary items that you don't need to keep in your bank. These can be items you can reclaim from Diango, or quest items you no longer need. Just click on the items to destroy it. You can also clear out space by going to the placeholder filter to see what empty placeholders you have. These will still take up space in your bank, so get rid of them if you don't want them. Then just clear the filter when done. If the bank size is too small for you, you can change the size of it by pressing escape and going into the edit layout and then advanced options. Click on bank and adjust it as you like. You can move around other notifications and menus here as well. You may need to move them around a bit to be able to get to the layer you want. Look around to see what you may want to change, but one thing I suggest is taking a look at your buff and debuff bar. Make sure they're not overlapping with anything else you have on screen, because it's important to be able to see this clearly when in combat. Now let's take a look at some helpful setting options starting with the Interface tab. If you go to the Inventory tab and scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a bunch of Destroy Empty Container options. When using items that leave behind empty containers, they can really start to annoy you by taking up unnecessary space, but you can check these off to avoid that. Check off whatever ones you'd like, but the ones I find particularly useful is destroying empty vials. Whenever I fight monsters that drop potions, I try to decant them as I get them in order to conserve on inventory space. Unfortunately, when you decant and it leaves behind an empty vial, it stays there taking up space. You could drop it, but it could still get in your way as you loot, so checking off this option will make it so the vial disappears after it becomes empty. You can set this up when drinking a potion too with this one here. If you like keeping up with distractions and diversions, go down to the Game Clock tab, still under Interface. If you check off the 5 minute notification, the game will give you a message in your chat when your favorite D&Ds are about to start. You even have the option of it playing a sound with this one. As an alternative, you can just check off the timers on the Game Clock instead. Now whenever you hover over the star by your clock, it will show which ones are ready. To set your favorite D&Ds for all of this to work, click on the compass on the bottom right and go to the minigame tab. Scroll down to the ones you like and favorite them by clicking on the star icon. You can unfavor them this way too. Now let's go to the combat and action bar tab. If you go down to the action bar, you can pull up additional bars on your interface with these options. 
When in combat, you'll get to a point where you'll want to see more than just the action bar you're cycled to. Click on any of these dropdowns to pull out your other bars to place them separately. Make sure your screen is unlocked by pressing L to move your new bars wherever is most convenient for you, and then lock it back up when done. Having multiple action bars can be helpful to add abilities you're likely to use with any combat style, like Devotion or Debilitate. That way, you can have your main abilities for your specific combat style on one action bar, but still use those others without searching for them. One thing I like to do is pull up another action bar to put to the side and bind teleports to them. Open up your teleports by pressing T or clicking on the home teleport button on the map. Just drag over the teleports you want to use on your bar. Make sure the bar itself is unlocked so you can actually drag them over to it. A neat little trick you can do with your combat action bar is set them to a specific weapon in the action bar binding tab. Check off the boxes to allow the game to swap your action bars, and then go through each bar to set it to the style that matches the abilities you have for it. Looking at my setup, I have all of my magic abilities on my third bar, so I will go under action bar 3, click on the drop down, and set it all to magic. Now whenever I equip a magic weapon, my action bar will automatically go to my magic action bar. This can really come in handy when you're fighting enemies that require you to switch between combat styles, so you don't have to fumble around to equip your new weapon and change your action bar. Something I struggled with a lot when starting out was how I would accidentally click on my summon when trying to click on monsters during combat. This would pull up my Beast of Burden's inventory or their interaction screen, and it would just constantly get in the way. This can actually be disabled in attack options. If you check off the Hide Familiar options, you won't have to worry about doing that anymore. Clicking on your summon will no longer pull up their interaction menu, so if you have the same problem as me, this is a good thing to do. Now in the Skills and Experience tab, go to Slayer. Normally, you'd want to bring your Slayer or Grim Gem to check how many tasks you have left. But you can activate your Slayer counter to show how many kills you have left here. Just right-click on the skull to switch between your Reaper and Slayer tasks. You can even check out your collection log from here. You can also change your Reaper task assignments here. Checking off this box will allow for group bosses to be included in your Reaper tasks, in addition to the other ones you would get. Checking this one off will double the amount of kills you need to do for each task. These options will give you an additional 25% Reaper points each, so if you want to get points faster, consider activating these. If you go under Controls and Settings, you can see a lot of different key bindings you can change, but there's one in particular I recommend setting. Look for Area Loot and set that to whatever key you want. By doing this, you can hit the key and it will bring up all lootable items in your vicinity instead of just clicking on the item. It really makes looting a lot easier, especially if you're fighting a lot of monsters during Slayer tasks. Now let's talk more UI-specific things. With an unlocked screen, you can pull up multiple menus to set by clicking through the options bar here. Feel free to click through and see what you like, but I'll name a few that I like to use. Hover over the red graph icon here and click on the money bag to pull up your loot drops. This will bring up a window that shows the drops you'll get from any monster you defeat. It shows how much of each one you get, along with its rarity as shown by the color. This can be useful when grinding at one location or with a boss. Hit the refresh button here to make sure you're starting clean, and then slay away. If you want to see how many coins you get, or how many of a certain item you get over time, even after banking it all, this will really help to show that. I also recommend the Notes tab. If you hover over your settings gear, click on the note icon to bring it out. You can add up to 30 notes using the plus sign here. This can be a great way to type in things like patch locations you use on your daily farm run, a list of move rotations for a boss you're killing, or reminders on items you need to get while skilling. You can even change the color for each note, although you do just have 4 options sadly. There's another use you can get out of your action bars. As you're fighting monsters, you'll likely pick up a lot of bones. Now obviously having something like a bone crusher to bury bones immediately will be nice, but if you don't have that yet, you can drag the bones to your bar and repeatedly click on them to quickly bury each bone in your inventory. 
If there is a certain item you keep picking up that you want to drop, you can also drag that over to your bar and keep clicking on it to drop it all fast. This can be really useful for skills like fishing. Now instead of going back and forth to the bank, you can continuously drop your fish this way so you don't have to leave your fishing spot. So sometimes it can be pretty hard to see depending on where you are in Gilinor. If you're ever struggling to see through a dark environment, right-click on the map icon here and click on Skybox Filters. Try out all of the options here to see what you like. I personally like the Shattered Worlds one because it has this cool looking effect on the sky, but Midday is a nice basic option to lighten up the area more. Now there's just one final tip I'd like to leave you off with if you're brand new to the game. In RuneScape, right-clicking is your best friend. Sometimes there are hidden options under right-click that you need to interact with, especially when questing. It even makes NPC trading faster, since you can right-click and trade with every shop to pull up their store right away without having to go through the dialogue. I recommend starting off with right-clicking everything just to see what kind of options you can pull up. Okay guys, hopefully this helps out any new players, and if you're a returning player looking for some refreshers, I hope you at least got one new thing out of it. We also have a beginner's guide for anyone looking for some more content-heavy basics to help you start out as you play. Please be sure to leave a like if you found this guide helpful, and check out our other videos for more guides. See you all later. Bye!